Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and various other components of research methodology. So in this segment on climatology, we are going to talk about the concept of monsoons. The traditional concept, the modern concept, the jet stream, how it is related and also other components of the monsoon and its various characteristics. But before we go ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now, let's understand the concept of monsoon. Although monsoon concept has been one of the most talked about topics when we prepare for any exam for that matter, UPSC exam or state services or university exams, wherever we study climatology, monsoons have been one of the most discussed topic. But still, we need to learn it. So here also I am trying to simplify it for you that let's understand monsoon in the best simple way as possible. So this term basically is derived from this Arabic word Mosim. Remember, we have already talked in Arab geographers, their contribution in geographical thought. So it was called Mosim. So Mosim is the word from where Mosim comes in, that is talking about the weather and climate. Or the other word for this Mosim, which is Monsin, M-O-N-S-I-N, this is in the Malayan language. So you have this Malaysian region where this word is Monsin, basically meaning the season. So this is the basic word. Now, what is it exactly? As we know, it is a rhythmic movement or in the periodic winds also we have learned monsoon as an example. So it is a seasonal wind that is having a reverse characteristic in terms of the direction. So it is change in the direction. It is a reversal of the trade winds direction that is basic idea behind this concept of monsoon and it is a double system of seasonal winds. Now understand it is not a single system, it is a double system. Basically means what? They flow from sea to land during the summers and from land to sea during the winters. That is how it is the double system, right? So during summers, the low pressure is on the land as we know. So this is Tropic of Cancer and this is the area where in summers the sun is overhead. So when sun is moving from equator towards this particular Tropic of Cancer, what is moving along with it? The belts of pressure is also moving along with it, right? That we have already learned in the pressure systems, pressure belts. So basically what happens, there is a low pressure on the land. And where is the high pressure? Here in the ocean. So differential is there, so high to low the wind starts flowing, this is the basic idea, right? So what happens? Some scholars tend to treat monsoon winds as land and sea breeze on a large scale. This is the first basic idea that we have discussed right now, the high pressure to low pressure, land and sea, this is the connection. So monsoons are peculiar to Indian subcontinent or Southeast Asia for that matter and for that matter some parts of Central Western Africa also, but where this section is there, Western Africa, there it is called pseudo monsoon. So that we discuss later on, but for now understand the basic idea of these monsoons. So they are more pronounced in the Indian subcontinent, right? So this is inherently part of the Indian subcontinent region that we talk with the concepts of monsoon. So further looking at this particular diagram, what you see the same kind of thing here, the Indian monsoon are what? Convectional cells on a very large scale. Now when we say convectional cell, basically the same concept, hot air rises up, right? And what happens? This particular place which is buoyed is filled by the cold air from the high pressure. So there is a convection going on, right? This is what is convection. So what happens? Low pressure is there on the land, right? And high pressure, so wind is flowing towards the land. This is a basic idea. And they are periodic or secondary winds we know, that is seasonal reversal. And India receives southwest monsoon winds in summers. That is why our summer monsoon is also called southwest monsoon. And in winters what happens? The sun is again going back to Capricorn. So pressure belts start shifting again southwards. So the wind starts coming from the land to the oceans, right? That is what we say is the winter monsoon. So that is important here. Now, apart from these basic concept of these summer monsoon and winter monsoon, that is the two segments, the southwest monsoons are formed basically because of what we say is intense low pressure system formed over Tibetan plateau. Now remember, this portion, Tibetan portion, Tibetan plateau is a barren rock area, dry desertic area. Also this particular portion of the western part of India which is Thar Desert. So what you see, these low pressure systems are here, right? Acute low pressure, it basically means what? It means that this surface is heated and the air at this surface is going up as hot air rises up, the same concept. 
then what is here the subtropical westerly jet right so this catches it up and it transforms into this particular easterly jet as we have learned in the concept of jet stream now this easterly jet comes to this part of indian ocean and it subsides here when it subsides here what happens when subsidence is there high pressure is formed remember due to the subsidence this high pressure is again here and what is here there is a heat here low pressure so this low pressure high pressure system is created and where jet stream is there so this wind starts moving in this direction right so what happens the northeast monsoons are associated with high pressure cells over tibetan and siberian plateau now this was during the summer time what happens exactly opposite during the winters in northern hemisphere so what happens here what you see this particular portion is now actually cooling down right the himalayan region so what happens cool air dense air high pressure and where is the low pressure now because sun is going to shine on the capricorn so low pressure is going with the sun here right so what happens the wind starts blowing here and this is the direction right so southwest monsoons bring intense rainfall to the most of the regions in india and northeastern monsoon bring rainfall to the southeastern coast of india that is this particular coast right because they pick moisture from here and then they rain here right so this is what is important the southern coastal zone of simandra and coast of tamil nadu the countries like india indonesia bangladesh myanmar all these regions are actually under the influence of this particular monsoon situation or monsoon winds now let's talk about the factors responsible point wise so factors responsible for first south west monsoon creation so the first factor as we know is intense heating of tibetan plateau so what is this idea this is about this particular tibetan plateau which heats up so this air is going up and then low pressure high pressure system is created because of this permanent high pressure cell in southern indian ocean east to northeast of madagascar in summers now during summers where is the high pressure remember this portion right this is the madagascar portion and there here you have a high pressure right and this is where from high pressure the winds start flowing and here you have somali jet or the cross equatorial jet right so what is there this itcz is there and that is what is shifting in the summers so this is what we basically mean by this now factors that influence the onset of southwest monsoon so what you see as these factors what is important apart from these two important things the tibetan plateau and the high pressure system what is important apart from above points subtropical jet stream now remember this is the jet stream which is flowing here which picks up this and then it creates a tropical easterly jet so this we have already learned then somalian jet stream which is here which pushes the wind further towards india right in the southwest direction intertropical convergence zone basically means what this particular position where trade winds from both sides meet and this itcz also starts migrating northward during summer and again when there is winter in southern hemisphere because of the sun is moving towards south so basic idea is this itcz is with sun movement right as the sun goes north or the south accordingly the pressure belts also start moving north or south so that is what the solar insulation the temperature and pressure relationship we have learned in the previous lectures now apart from this remember there is something which is related to this is walker circulation that is the indian branch the walker circulation is basically pacific waters but it is interconnected with what indian waters as well so if this part is warm or this part is cold it will influence the temperature of this area as well right so that is how this walker circulation is related in details when we learn about this oceanic currents and walker circulation we'll discuss this in details as well and also this enso phenomena that is el nino southern oscillation or la nina right so this el nino and la nina which is warm ocean current and cold ocean current of the pacific region their fluctuation this is also an important factor so when we discuss el nino la nina el nino modoki those things the walker circulation in a separate lecture there we understand this dipolar movement that is called indian ocean dipole and how this is affected because of this enso phenomena and also because of the walker circulation but for now just understand that these are the factors that operate
right because the warming and cooling of ocean is very much important as important as the warming and cooling of the land surface that is where the gradient is created and that gradient leads to what the movement of air in a particular way so this is the important factors that we need to discuss now let's understand the mechanism although we have discussed it separately several times but once again let's understand what happens in the classical theory now remember the classical theory is the edmund halley theory which is based on the thermal contrast the thermal concept right so which is the thermal concept remember therm basically means heating concept so differential heating sea breeze and land breeze concept that is the thermal concept and that is the basic mechanism understood traditionally so it is also called classical theory traditional concept remember that is important as this is thar desert which is heated up here tibetan plateau is heated up so low pressure is created on the land and then air moves towards the land right so differential heating is there so monsoons are also mentioned in scriptures like rig vedic hymns as well but the mechanism was actually not there so mechanism through science and remember the arabs contribution the scientific study they actually discussed about these important mechanism of these winds that is seasonal nature of the winds and remember the scholar's name al masudi he is famous for actually giving this shape to the concept of this monsoon the reversal of ocean currents and monsoon winds how they are related and in 17th century sir edmund halley finally explained these thermal contrast between continents and ocean but it was also criticized because if it is so then why not every place in the world has monsoon why only this area so this is why this is just a traditional concept it was not well explained scientifically because in modern theories there are some other factors and phenomena that are also responsible for actually creating monsoon of a very unique nature in the indian subcontinent region right so that is part of the modern theories right traditional concept is only thermal concept that we know so modern theories is basically talking about apart from these contrast thermal contrast it is also talking about the influence of these continents orography that is mountains right conditions of air circulation in the upper troposphere that is about jet stream theory that we know so halley's theory has lost much of its significance because it was a traditional theory it don't, did not have the understanding of these jet streams and all so modern theories are based on the air masses so that is also called that's why air mass theory how a particular air mass is formed right and how jet stream is important in carrying these air masses and this is the entire circulation in this modern theories so a little more detail on the classical theory it is sir edmund halley's theory that is called thermal concept so what happens the summer monsoon is because higher temperature and lower pressure in central asia and oceans flow towards this landmass so this is what you see the summer 10th june 15th june almost by july the entire of india is occupied right so this is the summer monsoon and what you see again in the winter monsoon india grows colder than arabian sea so there is again back movement of these breeze coming back to the ocean so this is the basic classical theory and the idea behind classical theory is similar to land and sea breeze concept so that is important but drawback is what the monsoons do not develop equally everywhere on earth even if there is a thermal contrast basically he failed the edmund halley's concept actually failed to explain this sudden outburst of monsoons and also the delays for which the modern theory has lots of concept that is integrated right all the concepts of jet stream air masses indian ocean dipole walker circulation el nino la nina phenomena right so that is important and it is predicted that this year 2020 it is a la nina year so what is going to happen then winters are going to get extreme that we know right so that is important so these things have not been mentioned in the traditional classical theory now look into these two maps now let's understand the pressure system right when in july what happens and what happens in january if you look into the january pressure system portion here is what is the pressure given it is 114 15 here right you see these isobars 116 18 19 so where is the high pressure high pressure is going when you are going up in the india so high is here low is here this is the situation in january so what will happen the winds are going from where to where if you look into the arrows the wind direction is largely where from high to low so you see this is the larger direction of the wind which is like this right blowing over the india but what you see in july it's exactly the reverse why because pressure system is also changing accordingly so where is high pressure now high pressure is 
here which is about more than a thousand and gradually it is decreasing as you go and it becomes almost 992 when you go to the top portion of Northwest India it is somewhere 990 or 992 so from 1000 and above it is less than 990 so that is what the difference is so here is the low pressure here is the high pressure what you see so what happens the wind direction changes and this is what we say is the seasonal shift and that is where the monsoon concept gets strength from this idea that the ITCZ travels almost 8 degree in one month. So remember in April it is on 8 degree, on May it is about 16 degree, in June it is about 24 degree. So this is where it is almost vertical on 21st June, right overhead sun is shining on the Cancer 23 and half. So this is how 8 degree shifts a month right this is how itcz shifts so itcz shift basically means what the entire climatic regime and the weather patterns along it is now shifting up so that is what brings the entire india under the influence of monsoon right so that is important in terms of isobars if you observe so look at this particular map of onset of monsoon what is the situation just at first june right so what you observe this is the situation where you have this kerala coast where the monsoon hits about this eight degree on first june right so this is important here and what you see further on 5th June, this is the particular level, then you have this level on 10th June, on then 15th June, you see this on about further 17th June, 18th June, and further this is the 1st July and 15th July. So as you see from 1st June to 15th July roughly, the entire India is now covered. So basically one month or one and a half month of this time span right so this is how this entire india is covered and gradually the moisture that is here remember that is also going to get lesser and lesser with time so maximum moisture is during the first phase which is here and also in the area of this particular northeastern region remember this is the meghalayan plateau so all these winds hit here and the maximum rainfall occurs here and then gradually the winds take a turn remember this is the himalayan belt the syntaxin bend so the wind turn here and they start going like this so gradually what happens so right from about 1000 to 600 centimeter variation in this zone it starts going gradually decreasing so 250 200 and gradually when it comes to delhi ncr or western part of india it starts becoming drier so what you see western part of this area is dry so that's the reason because monsoon winds are now spent there all their moistures while they reach western part of the country. So moisture shedding starts here and then it goes to this portion and then it takes this turn. So this is how the summer monsoon starts actually generating these impact on Indian climate. So that is important. So what you observe is a clear contrast in summer what happens and in winters what happens. Now what happens you see the easterly trade winds here in the summers so what you see this is now reversed right so this direction is what we see is this wind is pulled here now here you have this itcz and what is happening here you have jet stream which is taking this we have already discussed about it so this is the reversal in the system the traditional system is this now it is reversed that is why in the summer monsoon southwest monsoon it is reversal and in winters what happens it's just the opposite now what is happening the itcz is shifting south so what happens all these winds are pulled south because of the pressure gradient and they because of the coriolis force deflect accordingly as we know so these easterly trade winds remember again here is a change in the direction it is deflected here so this is what the modern theory is all about it is called air mass theory which has the complementary factor of all these itcz shifting change of ocean currents change of indian ocean water temperature and all those factors together with the jet stream factor which actually leads to this formation of the entire concept so modern theory is what is air mass theory and remember it is the modification of the planetary winds that we say that is why it is periodic winds variable winds that we have learned in the wind section already so that is what is important here and the role of itcz is what is the most important part here right so when you discuss monsoon Remember to discuss the traditional concept as well and the modern concept as well with the discussion of all these concepts. So don't lose on jet stream concept. Also talk about ocean currents. Also talk about the shifting of ITCZ that is the most important, right? So these are important three major points 
and how this wind changes its direction and how the intensity of these rainfall also varies across India. What is the role of syntaxial bend here, right? How the wind shift its direction and accordingly how the moisture condition also varies in India. So somewhere you have 200 rain centimeter rainfall, somewhere you have 600 centimeter rainfall. Even in some places we have more than 1000 centimeter rainfall and at the same time one place in the country is not even having 50 centimeter of rainfall in a year. So why this contrast? What is the reason? So remember, topography of India is also to be explained when you talk about the monsoons. For details, you can also go and refer to the NCERTs and make your answers as well. So now, when we have learned about the details of Indian monsoon, its various characteristics and various mechanism associated to it and also the traditional and modern theory, in the sessions to come, we will be talking about more on air masses, air fronts and several other topics of climatology. So stay tuned, stay safe and keep watching.